go up to two, three, sometimes even four wide if you're pushing your luck. And we now ride on board with the BMW M4 GT3 Fanatec logo glowing on the steering wheel. Buttons, of course, illuminated as well. Towards turn one, heavy braking zone. Got to slope right down, gear two, very tight. Run it out wide to the curb and be very careful on track limits. And now bring it back across to the right-hand side for turn two as it's a very long sweeping left-hander. Feels like it goes on forever. Some drivers prefer to hug the inside. Some drivers double apex and then flat on the power, of course, in the drive for turn three. Dab of opposite lock as he comes out of turn three up the hill. A little bit of spray being kicked up from a car ahead. Fingers crossed that isn't going to affect Downing's lap too much. And then you want to get it tucked in nice over the inside curb. Be very careful of the outside curb. A lot of moisture being held there. We saw once again another dab of opposite lock for Chris Downing. He's almost driving this thing, drifting it out of corners and sliding it through them. Try and get as much traction as he can. And now the tricky turns six and seven chicane. Very heavy anti-cut curbs on the inside can really upset your lap and, of course, throw you wide over the grass and then into turns eight and nine. Again, typical switchback corners on themselves at Hungara Ring. And now the fast sweepers of turns 10 and then into 11. 11, very easy to get wrong on corner exit. Lots of extra runoff there, but be very, very careful of track limits. And, of course, picking up three track limits will equal a trip down pit lane for yourself on top of the mandatory pit stop. And now another heavy braking zone down into turn 12. Again, a good passing place if you can maximize a run through 11 and pull alongside as you run on down. Keeping it tight through turns 13, yellow wall on the outside. Pit lane begins to your right-hand side there, marked by the cone, and turn 14. Again, another long sweeping corner. So lots of long corners here at Hungara Ring. Got to be very patient with the throttle. Chris Downing comes towards the line in the number 23, Volpa Simsmore, for a 156.625. And looking towards the weather in the top right-hand side of your screen, the next 10 minutes, Callum, it's going to get a little bit heavier. Yeah, people are going to be wanting to set those laps now with that rain getting heavier. Obviously, uh, it looks like it's lining up in 30 minutes, but that's uh, 20 minutes too late for these guys. So uh, it's going to have to be performing in wet conditions. Obviously, the first bit of rain we've had at any race throughout this series, obviously being in Mazzano last time out was nice and dry, although uh, I think tonight track limit penalties might be a bit of a problem. As you said, it's very flowing circuit, so... Uh, Especially that, uh, that middle sector, if you're off in one corner, which is very easy to do in the wet, you're going to be put off the next few ones. It's going to be uh, quite hard for these guys to, I believe, to keep it in the white lines. We'll have to see how they do. Yeah, of course, you want to be keeping it kind of very tidy indeed through Hungara Ring. can be very tricky, as I said earlier, with track limits. I believe we're having a few technical issues on YouTube at the moment as well, which is why we're still spectating Chris Downing on his laps. And Andre Pozniakov is now your provisional pole sitter with Hugo Kolot. Very, very close behind indeed. Just 0 0.42 of a second separates those guys. Porsches looking very strong in the pre-practice and in the kind of practice session as well when the server went live. So, uh, of course, the Porsche with the rear engine uh, rear engine over the rear axle, of course, will help its traction through the corners. And, of course, you do want to maximize every single bit of drive that you can get off them. Yeah, Porsche obviously really going to help. It's, again, something we've talked about every race of series where the car that you're in is going to provide you with different benefits and different um, different sort of shortcomings at every round, depending on the track you're in. As we see, uh, I think they're really fighting the wheel. Lots of adjustments made. As he's in the wet, I think... Uh, these guys are going to be running a lot more traction control, a lot more ABS to help out with them and help themselves out in these conditions. Uh, we know it's going to be I think, fairly changeable during the race as well, so these guys might have to deal with uh, going from wet to dry. We don't really know, really. We're going to have to see what the ACC weather system throws at us, John. Yeah, the ACC weather system, as unpredictable as always, as we saw uh, Tudor Budu there losing it just ahead of Pozniakov on his fastest lap. Uh, of course, while we're talking about the vehicle choice, uh, the vehicle choice for the Euromasters, uh, of course, suggests GT3 machinery only. Uh, we're featuring the Audi R8 LMS Evo 2, uh, the BMW M4 GT3, and we, of course, also allow the BMW M6 GT3 uh, alongside the Ferrari 4 488 GT3 Evo, uh, the Lamborghini Huracan Evo, and the Mercedes AMG. So, and, of course, finally, the Porsche. So any teams are in the machinery that is obviously coming with a new model this season obviously we've got the 992 on the way whether or not that will make it before this season ends and of course alongside the ferrari and the evo 2 version of the Huracan as well uh, may be eligible for an upgrade although 
nil all quiet on the ACC update front as Matt Stevens puts the Mercedes up into P5. See Matt Stevens practicing a lot with Richard Phillips and, and typically Richard Phillips the quicker of the pairing. Uh, although Matt Stevens definitely uh, Hungara ring suits him much, much more uh, all the way up into P5. And Pedro Marquez, of course, the only Lamborghini in the field uh, sucker for punishment after competing in the Super Trofeo. Uh, cup that we ran before the Euro Masters and uh, picked the Lamborghini for yet another season. Uh, has gone well uh, in the previous rounds, but just kind of falls foul on Lady Luck's side. Hasn't had the best start to the season, but hopefully he can switch it around here today. But still, 2.5 seconds to find Callum. That's quite a big window comparing to what we saw this weekend in the eSports series. Yeah, we're used to seeing these guys a lot closer up. Obviously, the eSports series are uh, very close. I think that Pre-qualifying obviously split by by 0.4 of a second, and the qualifying at, at Kyle Army was you, know, you had you had 48 cars within a second out of a out of a grid of 49. So uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's, uh, Daniel Crinson's giving uh, Matt Stevens some stick for actually finally loading a livery correctly. So uh, gonna have to keep an eye out for that Mercedes as it uh, pounds around. Yeah, but a good lap to put him in fifth. Pedro used to seeing him further up than than two and a half seconds off, but I'm sure he'll. Uh, these guys are just going to be pounding out laps, just getting used to the conditions. Obviously, with a dry run, you want to go minimal fuel, etc. But um, with the, when it's wet, you just put some fuel in it and just keep pounding laps and just see what you can do. Yeah, of course, wet tyres being a little bit more susceptible to the kind of wet weather, of course, cooler track temps, you know, better tyre life, should we say. And uh, we all know Pirelli wets tend to go on forever, uh, as you say, Callum. So, you know, chuck some fuel in. Uh, for the 15 minutes of qualifying tonight, making it, of course, the standardised format. Uh, but like you say, normally in the dry sessions, we see cars going out very, very light on fuel. They they bung a set of Pirellis on, they smash around for two or three laps, pop back in, change the tyres over, chuck another little bit of fuel in and go out again. So the cars are at their, their lightest and their fastest, although in these conditions, probably not so much. Jordan Daly, uh, way out of sync to where we're used to seeing him, of course, backed off on the last lap to Try and create some space ahead of him to the 256. Uh, hopefully he doesn't run into the back of that, but still big improvements to be had there. Um, Andy Borman, uh, P14 uh, in practice, saw him way, way up the grid, uh, much, much higher uh, compared to the top time set by, I believe it was Poznikov or um, Polovchok in the two of the Porsches. But looking to the front, uh, looking to the front Callum, it's very, very close between the Barless Esports, Chris Downing, and uh, Hugo Collot just slightly outside. But this man here, Rafael Malho, had a great start to the season for the team STR. Currently resides down in P8 uh, at the moment. Looking at his lap, it's looking like a, a very good one indeed. Certainly some improvements to be had if he can just get the final corner right. And he swoops around the inside very tidily. Minimizes any oversteer to power himself towards the line. Does jump up indeed to P5. Not too far behind Collot. And of course, these guys did go toe to toe briefly at Mazzano before Colot just ran away. Um, but it definitely looks like a Porsche track, this one, rather than more suited to the Audi. Yeah, certainly. Uh, obviously, we've got those two Porsches up in the top three, but there's sort of that, that gap of those those top five, including Marlow, Colot, Polovchuk, Downey, and then Pozniakov, they're sort of all broken away a little bit. The, the rest are sort of six tenths plus off. So, again, we might be seeing a little bit of a train of these guys at the front with. Uh, categorize this championship with a lot of midfield trains but the sort of front two drivers sort of streaking off and, and sort of having their own battles we see a car very wide and uh gliding out of there i think it was of uh edison uh in the bmw the uh, number 180 uh they're just a bit wide through uh the corner at the uh the end of the first sector there so uh, a bit of a nervous moment in the wet these cars are very different animals in the wet gt3 cars they're very powerful so it, not easy to drive for an hour straight in the wet. Obviously, this race being an hour long qualifying, as mentioned before, 15 minutes. We're going for a full hour, a mandatory pit stop with one litre of fuel and no tyres required. But I'm wondering if the track conditions change enough, are we going to see anyone starting on wets and going to dries or having to start on dries and go to wets? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's going to be one of those kind of mixed races. Uh, speaking to Tim Ireland uh, pre-broadcast, uh, he did say he had a very good mix of dry sessions, wet sessions, and mixed sessions. So literally the weather can do absolutely anything tonight. 
Uh, let's hope the drivers have practiced in the kind of mixed changing conditions. Uh, let's hope they know when to switch from the wet to the dry or the dry to the wet. To Joe Dorber in the 777 wrestling it through the final turn before heading to the line in the 777. Great improvement there up into P14, slowly down to 15 with a 157.477. Les Stevenson uh, beating him and Rudy Filmalter just ahead of him as well. So uh, it's kind of what we've seen in the previous rounds where we get blocks of manufacturers uh, kind of stuck together in the lower fields. We've got a, a pair of BMWs with John Eraser and Dan Edwardson. Uh, we've got the triple, you know, triple row of Porsches there. Um, and then a kind of good mix down towards the bottom of the field. Uh, but great to see Edverson and Lindrup, of course, back uh, representing Denmark in their uh, attempt at conquering the Euro Masters. And Matthew Kingston Lee gets caught out by a car recovering. Uh, looks like turn, I want to say 12 uh, before 13 there. Um, not sure who that was, possibly Jelly Vestrata as we come back to him, uh, sat on the pit lane at the moment. Two minutes to go in qualifying, probably retired the car for the rest of the session. Uh, but absolutely rotten luck there for Matthew Kingston Lee, of course, heavy lick in the door, forces him into the wall. Definitely a lot of aero damage on that BMW M4. So hopefully Matthew Kingston Lee can still set an improvement on his pace as Hugo Carlot jumps through the chicanes now of six and seven before heading to turn eight. Audi looking very settled, doesn't look as kind of loose as the Porsches did uh, when we rode on board earlier with uh, Posnikov through the S's. He was constantly soaring at the wheel, making small corrections and almost driving the car like a like a Mark II Escort with the with the back end driving it mainly with the throttle and the steering inputs uh, rather than what we traditionally would do of course with with a Porsche where you kind of stick it in stick the power down and the rear end grips and, and throws you through the corner but heavy on the brakes now in 12 needs to keep it tidy into 13 as we cut back to uh, Polovchok in the Barless Esports car just behind uh, Kolot here riding on board down to turn 12 you can see how dark Hungaro Ring is uh, of course, there's no floodlights. It's not a modern circuit, should we say, by by any means. Still typically very old school, no floodlights, lots of grass, a little bit of extra runoff here and there, but still predominantly grass and gravel. So you've got to be very careful on the Pirelli. You can see Polovchok soaring at the wheel, much like his teammate Pozniakov, breaks into the last turn, skates very wide, almost treating it like a double apex, nails the throttle, straightens up the wheel, wrestling it all the way to the exit curb and all over the curb sideways. Big arm blow opposite lock and remains in P4 with a 156.042, his best time uh, last time by. And our favorite driver, Callum, is here tonight, Carlos Calatiud. It's only taken us two championships to learn how to say his name. And he is currently down in P17 with the Turner Motorsports BMW uh, liveried car, of course, represented by Volkenhorst when the car ran in Spa uh, of last year, just gone. And Carlos seeking to improve. Currently P17. Not much to jump. Andy Broadman and Joe Dorber ahead of him. Comes to the line. Does improve just ahead of Joe Dorber there. Splits up the train of Porsches with a 157.377. Uh, we've got a couple of cars still on laps here. And a, and a new name that we've not seen before uh, in Emilian Coirit. Uh, the 85 number GPX racing car. Uh, Frenchman here currently down in P21. Just behind Matthew Kingston Lee. And of course Porsche in the car that we thought was going to be a bit dominant but i think it's only dominant in the right hands callum i'm not sure if you've driven this car but it it is very very tricky uh in the dry let alone kind of in the wet yeah i remember driving it before and just having to go to another car straight away it was when i probably when i first got into acc and i was driving the porsche and it was it, it's just so difficult to deal with it's a characterized obviously by that rear engine it just makes it so hard a point i was going to make earlier as well is uh well, they've now both done laps and ruined it. Uh, Matt Stevens and Nico Kumpu have set the exact same time before uh, Nico Kumpu improved by about three tenths of a second to jump Matt Stevens for sixth place. But they were both on the exact same time in completely different machinery. Uh, one with a front engine Mercedes, one with a mid engine Ferrari. So uh, interesting to see how in the wet and Mahangara ring these guys are still sort of battling so closely to each other. But um, yeah, as we see people starting to complete their laps now, we're seeing the love took just sort of wrestle this Porsche around it's currently sitting in fourth place he's one of the only guys actually that can uh, challenge and he's just crossed the line there and managed to not improve so it looks like the front of the grid is going to stay as it is at the minute as Andy Boardman a car oh and he's Andy Boardman's given up on his lap uh, not going to improve there so uh, into the wall as we jump and have a look at the qualifying standings very interestingly there tonight John uh, no one setting a purple sector on pole position 
Yeah, we keep seeing this in the Euro Masters, weirdly enough. Guys not kind of nailing every single sector in a lap. We've always had a mix of sectors, as you see. Kolot with the fastest sector one, and then two and three go to Polovchok. But, of course, looking where he is, he's down in P4. His teammate Pozniakov at the top there, but not a single purple sector. But the front row, or the front two rows, should we say, looking very, very close on time indeed you have to go all the way down to p10 until you find the kind of magical one second window that we always talk about here on rci tv so looking like it's going to be very competitive here tonight we've got you know a range of manufacturers and big names in the field and uh your race start of course if you look towards the top right hand side of your screen you see a brief weather forecast on the outline there it's it's light rain at the moment the track is currently wet decreasing in the next 10 minutes and then 30 minutes the rain is going to stop However, with the low temperatures, of course, only 18 air and 18 track, with the race starting, of course, at 9 p.m. in game time at night, the weather is going to change, but I think the track is going to be very, very wet still for a few laps yet. As we now have a look at your championship standings, of course, Hugo Colot, absolutely dominant performance so far, 72 points, provisionally championship leader, uh, followed by Rafael Malho in the Audi with 58. We then have the first of our Porsches on Andre Pozniakov with 53, joint tied with Andy Boardman also on 53. Chris Downing on 48, Nico Kumpu on 44, Tom Shipston, uh, British Masters Silver Champion on 44 as well, Joe Dorber on 40, Matthew Kingston Lee 37, and Pavel Gajda on 34, rounding out your top 10 in split one. As we move on to page two, Martin Lindrup, the first of the Danish drivers represent here in the Audi R8 on 34. Tudor Boudou, of course, our Lamborghini uh, Super Trofeo split two champion on 31. Andre Dixon Chen on 28. Will Stevenson on 25. Polovchok on also 25. Matt Stevens 23. Tied with Carlos Calatiud also on 23. John Eraser, who has popped into our Twitch chat tonight on 21. Emilian Koirot on uh, 19 points. Uh, Richard Withel on 17. And that rounds out your top 20 of split one. And now moving on to probably what will be one of the final pages. Jordan Daly on 17 points. Certainly not where we expect to see him. Pedro Marquez on 15. Charlie Spence joint with Jelly Verstraten on 13. And then Les Stevenson and Cassiaro also tied on 12 points apiece. Stefan Berner and Dan Edvardson tied on 11. Ross Cam and Phil Malta also tied together on 10 points apiece. Uh, so we've got a lot of ties up and down the field at the moment, of course, accounting for drop rounds. And Hubert Hauser, the last of your championship contenders on nine points. Bosch, Rationov, Alon and Tornberg have all signed out and will not be competing for the remainder of the season. Cars now begin to get ready. Just under two minutes of grid time to go. And it's that time when we take a tour down the grid. And uh, unfortunately, it's a little bit dark tonight. So not sure if we will see too much detail on, of course, these liveries. And uh, it's probably a good time to mention, of course, our partners here at RCI TV, which kind of make everything possible. It makes, you know, the community possible, broadcast possible, and everything you see on here. Uh, of course, AK Esports, uh, leading Italian esports management company, uh, founded in 2005 as an IT company and establishing itself as a point of reference in the hardware sector. Of course, if you think any of their solutions, whether it be esports or hardware, can help you out, Go and check them out in the description below. We're also partnering with driver61.com, where you can, of course, get 25% off your driver coaching by using our exclusive discount code with a link in the description below. Uh, of course, Fanatec needs no introductions, one of the leading brands in dedicated sim racing hardware. We do have an affiliate link in the description below, which does help us with some of the running costs here at RCI if you're looking to pick up any new hardware in 2023. And, and two new partners, of course, those Eagle Eye viewers or regulars here will know digitalmotorsports.com uh, offers a number of products and services from, you know, virtual experiences, corporate events, and an early drive program in conjunction with BMW at Mondello Park. Esports championships, driver training, simulator components, and even complete rig solutions. 
uh, if you believe they can help you at all of course check them out in the description below and finally go setups uh, formed to be one of the premium esports setup stores for assetto corso competizioni uh, their primary aim was to create setups for all skill levels whether you're esports ready such as some of the drivers we saw on saturday and sunday um, or if you're looking for a safer alternative for your favorite car featuring a plethora of esports stars on their team you can be sure the setup you choose has extensive hours behind it and uh for those of you that don't know i say it every time i mention them they have a jaguar pack callum i really want to see a jaguar on the grid we need to do a jaguar only championship i've suggested the meme championship before as the cars finally sort of get rolling here uh on the preview so uh, the back of the grid will be away soon i've suggested a, uh, a meme championship with the jaguar um, and the cars like that at, at some fun tracks, but uh, we'll have to see. Maybe that's what Monday nights will become, and uh, we'll have to race it instead of commentating. But cars obviously heading out right now, as you said, wet to start off with, but drying out. A couple of people reckoning that starting on wets, obviously, and maybe thinking about dries later on. Uh, as you said, we're not sure how slick the track will stay um, with this rainfall currently. It, it really depends on how well these cars clear it up. Obviously, groove tyres will clear the track a lot better than slicks will. So the longer all of these cars stay out on groove tyres, the better the track will clear. Uh, just the nature of the way that groove tyres work. Obviously, they are designed to move water out of the way of themselves. So they are going to move the water off the racing line. Uh, it be interesting to see if any of these guys decide to take any alternative lines going into these corners. A lot of uh, sweeping corners here at Thangara Ring. So interesting to see if we see any uh, wet karting lines come out. Yeah, definitely. So racing in the wet, a little bit of a different animal. Sometimes you find alternate lines work slightly better than others. Uh, but as you said, Callum, with the drying rate of the track, uh, rain due to lighten in 10 minutes, due to stop in the next 30. Although with the air and track temperature being very cool, going to take quite a while for the surface to dry up and i think the longer you can stay out on your initial wet set of pirellis i think the better uh, we saw it just a couple of weeks ago at donnington park where we started in the absolute soaking wet we then went to the dry and then uh, you know the track just did not dry out the way we thought it would uh, some drivers short fueled um, and obviously came in gambled on the dries and the, and the dries just did not kind of kick in until the last three minutes of the race and by that point you know driving on them stone cold absolutely ruined them and uh posniakov uh, if you're listening uh, to us in the broadcast you might want to turn on some headlights uh, because we cannot see the back of your porsche at all and of course the drl's only illuminating the front uh, he will have a message uh, on his screen so hopefully he's paying attention to the in-game hud and uh, as the cars now start to form up two by two uh, chris downing of course in second position posniakov on the front row of the grid takes your pole position um, of course, we'll have the inside line uh, into turn one. Uh, can he fend off the charging turbocharged BMW? We know the Porsches are very good off the initial get-go. Of course, naturally aspirated rear engine car all the way over that rear axle, bedding the tyres in as we see there. Posniakov's headlights finally going on as he comes through the final turn, turn 14. Uh, Hugo Colot there in P3 alongside Chris Downing on the inside. If he can get a good run up to the inside of him, he could be the big gainer kind of out of nowhere. Posnikov might not even see him coming as we now run aboard with Cassiaro's Porsche P8. Going to have a fantastic view. Uh, come on, a big face full of spray as we wait for the lights to go green. And they go. We have a drive through already for Pedro Marquez for maybe being slightly off the start positioning. Cassiaro there to the left hand side looks to try and kind of spot the breaking point should we say down into turn one we got a bit of a pinch already with Colot elbows out on I believe uh, that's Chris Downing just slipping down the order there we've got three wide in the background here between everybody this is absolutely crazy scenes at the front we see Colot trying to edge alongside Malho but Malho having none of it the door is open for Pozniakov and Malho goes through can Pozniakov now mount the defense he cannot Malho round the outside to your race lead as they head up the hill towards turn four uh, don't want to commentate as curse it but it seems almost too clean Callum at this stage for a wet start yeah, Pozniakov really struggling there against the Audis. He's dropping back quite a bit there, uh, getting mobbed by, I believe, Matt Stevens's and Pedro Marquez, who I assume has had that drive through cleared because it's not on the side. So, Seward's acting quickly to get rid of that, as I assume it was a 
one of ATC's buggy start features rather than anything. As we see Carl's going down the inside into the uh, first chicane and I believe a yellow flag after the kink of, is that turn seven, I believe, off the top of my head, I'm trying to remember. Uh, so the triple five car station we're after that. So we'll uh, have to see if the uh, replay tool can pick up anything that's happened there on the opening lap. Obviously, a wet start. Obviously, we expect some form of contact uh, between the drivers. There's Posnikov wide again and some at uh, bump drafting going on there, not really uh, desired at the moment in the wet, uh, but cars sort of just judging each other out with braking points obviously massively increased in the wet and with cold wet tyres it's going to be really hard for these guys to sort of start racing each other immediately straight away. Yeah, definitely so. Matthew Kingston Lee, I believe, the big loser there. And uh, it looks like uh, Posnikov there is just going backwards in the 86 Barless Esports car. I'm wondering if he started on dry tyres. And if you look to the top right hand side of his screen, yeah. we're already in damp He's conditions. Pitching. Uh, of course, rain is easing off in the next 10 minutes. Rain is completely stopping for the next 30. So, uh, you know, if Posyakov has started on those drives, he's already coming down pit lane. Of course, pit window open for the next just over 56 minutes. Uh, as you said in the opening broadcast, Callum, it's only a mandatory fuel stop. No need to change tyres as we watch a replay here. Andy Boardman in the Audi R8. Flash of the headlights from Jordan oh. Daly, maybe. Uh, I think on the green striped car, Carlos Calatayud in there as well matthew kingston lee off to the right hand side and uh i think we were uh the curse of the commentator as soon as i said it it went round turn four and it all kicked off um so yeah definitely striking once again but les stevenson here up into p10 one of your big kind of gainers uh in the wet racing this is the great thing i love about wet starts callum it, it always throws those random drivers you don't normally see towards the top end of the field they just avoid all the carnage and, and snake their way through yeah, a big one there is uh, again is Cassiaro as well. He's still up there in P7. We've uh, asked to see him at the top of the grid. He's really he's clearly uh, got some pace on the Porsche in the wet as we see the Porsche behind him. Uh, Les Stevenson right up close to the back of John Eraser's BMW there. Uh, so John Eraser just following in the train. And Les Stevenson, is he going to get a car alongside uh, along the quarter and try and hang it around the outside into the right-hander? Now he's got the inside line, so he's going to be out on the wet line uh, on a racer there so he's going to struggle but he gets the pad on the exit while that BMW picking up nicely and can cut across and take the defensive line down into the last sector now coming into turn 12 heading up towards the hairpin of turn 13 is anyone going to make a move down the inside looks like uh, Les Stevenson has got that back from the 180 uh, sorry defending from the 180 of Edverson now so Les Stevenson on the back foot after being pushed back by John Eraser there yeah, I think Les just playing a little bit cautiously uh, through turn 12 there um, when he pulled alongside uh, John Eraser. Of course, Eraser we know is a very hard but sometimes fair racer um, on that one, the 699. A few drivers already seeking out some standing water there up against the pit wall. So some Pirellis might already start to be overheating and slightly overpressured, which is, of course, going to erode down those tread blocks that you mentioned earlier on in the broadcast of course rain due to stop any minute now it's quite light as it is track isn't getting any wetter uh, with the train of cars cycling through of course 27 still lapping the circuit and uh, of course on the first kind of pit stop as we've got Posnikov, Boardman and Kingston Lee have cleared their mandatory stops but I'm curious to know which tyres they're taking because of course if you pick dry Pirellis at the moment they are far far too early to be in a kind of peak condition they're going to be stone cold you're going to be scrubbing them you're going to be you know absolutely ruining the surface of them so when it does switch to that kind of green or dry kind of um you know the green uh grip level should we say um the prelates are going to be ruined already and you're just going to have to come back down pit lane for another set so fingers crossed they are still on the wet tire uh, we're going to have probably some some people hopefully keeping an eye on conditions and uh you know the switchover point that we need to reach before and it seems like nico kumpu has gone wide in the s bends in the middle of the circuit and that allows cassiaro back through to p7 fantastic drive from the italian driver he's had a little bit of a, a rotten start to the season so far but p7 ahead of nico kumpu john eraser that is some feat to have already yeah, he's done, he's done a really good start to the race. Just having a quick chat with Stewie in the uh, in the Discord here. He thinks that uh, Cassio, uh, sorry, Posnikov, not Cassio, didn't take tyres, uh, but he did have a 1 minute 20 stop. So we're not really sure what he's doing there. If he didn't take tyres, he's obviously gambling on the, uh, the race staying wet. However, I don't think it will do. We've got no rain forecast after this, this rain eases off in about 10 minutes time there, as we see... Uh, 
gaggle of cars going uh, down the main straight. Two cars behind the Leicester Stevenson side by side. Three wide down the main straight now going into turn one. So these cars are, it's going to be a case of the last of the late breakers here as we see, I believe it was uh, Badger probably coming through there and a bit of bunching up through the first corner. Les Stevenson still makes it out ahead, but he's got a car right on the back of him here. Hard to tell with obviously the dark conditions. Really hard to pick out these liveries of these guys, but Les just playing the defensive line into the the hairpin before turning and taking the right hand corner on to the sort of straight here at the Hungara ring. Not really much of a back straight here, but uh, I'd sort of cast that one and up to the quick left hand kink as we see uh, Dixon Chen in the distinct GD number 64 Audi here, following behind uh, Rudy Filmotter in the 99 Porsche, a bright purple Porsche as he really gains on the brakes in through the hairpin here. Is he going to try and make some kind of move down into the chicane? No, it gets a poor exit compared to the Porsche. That Porsche is getting really good traction with that engine over the rear, John. Yeah, definitely. Porsche is the car you kind of want in these conditions with the planted uh, engine over the rear axle, giving that rear end all the push into the floor that it needs to make the Pirelli tyres really work. Dixon Chen there carrying a lot more speed uh, through turns eight into nine, runs a very different line to Rudy Filmotter ahead, and you can just see it's just not the line you want to be running as Rudy pulls out even more of a gap, so he kind of becomes the back car in the train ahead. Uh, you've got Gajda just ahead in the BMW. You've got Nico Kumpu ahead of him, and Dan Edvardson just up the road as well so very competitive drivers in this field at the moment Rudy Filmalter no stranger to battling the midfield of course he's going to know every single name around him as Edverson tucks under the rear wing Jordan Daly was the car behind Les Stevenson into turn one looking like he was trying to capitalize into two there Mercedes of course with the fog lights ablaze in the grill with the BMW just behind we see already drivers darting out to the pit wall to try and break the toe that should be uh, Les Stevenson and John Eraser ahead still fighting there as we ride on board now with Dan Everton splitter cam you can see the fog kind of coming off the back of the Mercedes not a lot of spray anymore and you see the groove Pirelli's there Everson getting very close indeed to the diffuser of Jordan Daly but keeping it out the back end of him as Rudy Filmalter uh, gains a position on Gadsda down into turn one we did say turn one would be the passing point and Rudy has made it work goes defensive in to two but no real need to as Gadsda is very far back now and Joe Dorber a big loser on the opening lap he was just outside the top 10 and qualifying and uh, now finds himself all the way down in P18 just behind Hauser with Richard Withel behind and Lindrup behind him uh, the Danish uh, driver of Lindrup much better run on the first round of Barcelona not having such good luck here at the Hungara ring and Joe Dorber maybe struggling a little bit with that Porsche not sure of course with the changeable weather Callum some drivers might have set their cars to be a lot better in the dry than the wet so cars you see struggling such as Joe Dorber who we of course expect to see higher up the field might have geared his car more to the to, to the dry conditions as soon as he dries do come out of their you know garage onto the car you might see Joe Dorber cutting through the field like butter yeah having a look at uh, setup options obviously some barely experienced with you want obviously a much softer car in the wet so for example some of the cars that we race uh when i'm racing in real life uh, as a mechanic we uh, we lop off the anti-roll bars on the uh, on the front and rear of the car just to really soften the car up you want to allow the car to sort of roll use its weight to get help it gain traction throughout the corners on especially on exits so uh that's the sort of adjustments you'd be making, but then obviously in the dry, that's going to cause you problems with different amounts of oversteer and understeer that maybe aren't that predictable. The same way goes if you run a dry setup on a wet track, you're going to be dealing with a lot of oversteer and a lot of understeer on the car because the car really is just too stiff for the track on the front and the rear end. So it'll be interesting to see what these guys do. As we see again, Les Stevenson battling down into turn one. I believe he's still trying to hold off the BMW of Dan Edverson behind and it's Jordan Daly in front. So uh, Jordan Daly's through there on Les Stevenson. Les Stevenson trying to hold on to that top 10 spot there. Uh, managing to place that Porsche quite well. The Porsche seems quite e easy to place, uh, John. Uh, it's, it's able to make, all the drivers are able to make quite decent defensive moves. Uh, sort of just forcing the cars behind to take the alternative line and maybe not the line they wanted to take, just where there isn't as much grip. Yeah, of course, with this kind of damp conditioning on the track that we have at the moment, the racing line is going to be the kind of grippier part of the circuit offline as you go. You might find a random puddle that hasn't quite yet dried up, and it might, of course, aquaplane you just enough off the circuit to not be able to set yourself up for a move on the next corner. But the Porsche, we know, typically very good on the brakes, very good on corner exit. As I say that, Dan Edverson taps right up behind Les Stevenson coming through the chicane into turn eight and now switching back to turn nine. Daily there fighting what looks like a little bit of understeer on that Mercedes, of course. 
course, all the way over the front end of that car. Typically a very short kind of rear end on the Mercedes. It's kind of very awkward when you, you do realize how long the front end is. It's, it's very disproportional to the rear end. Dan Everton losing out a little bit in the midsector. The Porsche looking very good indeed. And now the first of the race leaders to blink already. 40, just over 48 minutes on the clock to go. Track is still damp. Weather is set in for the next 30 minutes at least, but Hugo Kolot already down the lane and going to be interested to see what he does. Yeah, it'll be interested to see how, how long the stop is. Obviously, he's really been decent at stops this year, stopping on the mark. So uh, if it is a long stop. We will know he has to change tyres. I imagine it would be to dry. So we'll have to see where he comes out as we see that uh, Ferrari, Tom Shipson, who's probably a, a bit of a loser off the start there. Uh, I don't remember seeing him him that far down off uh, off qualifying obviously with the car if it happens in a wet start it's uh, really hard to pick up again it might have set it up for the dry I do love seeing these cars in the wet though and in the dark with their, uh, their auxiliary lights glowing as well Tom with a really nice choice of colour of that orange auxiliary light really makes that uh, silver orange and black livery pop as he's currently chasing down uh, Alsa in the in the 1979 BMW there so uh, again, just these guys maybe trying a little bit find it a little bit difficult to pass. Not, not confident in the uh, in the dry as you do in the sorry in the wet as you do in the dry. So uh, some of these guys might just be waiting it out to see as we see Hugo Hara emerge reemerge from the pit lane. There, I can't imagine that was a tire stop. It didn't seem long enough. Yeah, all the way down in P22 now. Hugo Cola, of course, the first official car uh, on the road that is your kind of lead car, shall we say now, since the pit stops have began. Les Stevenson. Also coming down the lane, losing out there to Pozniakov on pit exit. Um, just turning to my broadcasting tool here, we've got Hugo Kolot down with a, a 1 minute 13 roughly from pit in to pit out. Uh, of course, 8 seconds to the good on Pozniakov stop of a 1 minute 20. Uh, Andy Boardman with a 1 32. So, of course, fix the damage from the incident along with Matthew Kingston Lee with a 1 minute 59 from in to out. So, uh, Kingston Lee with an absolute rotten start to the race, although great to see him still in the running and not giving up. Of course, anything can happen in these kind of mixed conditions. And I'm wondering if uh, Colot has kind of sensed the track is, of course, now drying out, getting nearly to the greasy phase, and it's time to bring out the dry Pirellis. As we now see Rafael Malho come down the pits in the number 38 team STR car. Martin Lindrup for the uh, Cronulans eSports Sim Racing team. The number nine drifting it through the last corner. Not going to do any good for those wet Pirellis, although it needs to keep Richard Withel behind him. Not too far behind now is Carlos Calatiud as well. So definitely a name you want to be fearing when you do see them on the board behind you. We see another BMW just trying to seek out some of the wetter parts of the track. Hugo Colot now rounds through the penultimate corner, turn 13, before switching back to turn 14. He's going to see where he comes out in relation to Malho, of course, when they came in. Uh, Malho was behind Colot, I believe, as the timer counts down. We see there on the left-hand side, we ride on board with John Eraser. Quickly back to Malho now. Look to the mirrors in the back, and I think he's done just enough to fend off Colot there. And uh, looking towards the pit timers, uh, very close indeed. Hugo Kolot with a 1 minute 13 and uh, Malho with a 1 minute 12. So not too much between them, but you see what that's done for track positioning. Of course, Malho now with the clean air. Kolot is going to be the driver in the dirty air. So we want to see what these guys can do. And we see a yellow flag out now for the number 180. Yeah, uh, see, uh, oh, car backwards there in the middle of the track there. So the 180 is span and stopped on the exit of turn seven up to the run towards turn eight, I believe. That it flicks it around. Nice, very, very well done there to wait for a uh, gap in the traffic. Once there contact here between two cars, I believe there may be. Uh, yeah, two cars into one there really doesn't go there. And unfortunately, uh, Dan Edverson there spinning out the uh, the 180. Oh, sorry, Dan Edverson being spun out in the uh, in the car number 180 there. And another car on pit lane is Palovchuk. So, uh, and Matt Stevens. So these guys all pitting now. We do think these guys are pitting for dry tyres, including Hugo Collar and uh, the other cars that have pitted so far uh, of Barlow as well in the other Audi. We think these guys have all pitted for dry tyres. Maybe it was just a lap too early for, for Connaught there to get onto the dry tyres. Obviously, Marlow could put a slightly quicker lap in on the wets and uh, that one second pit stop as well. Uh, it might just not have jumped to the, uh, the, the uh, switchover point correctly as we see cars battling into, on the brakes into pit lane. So two cars running there side by side of Edverson and I believe Lindrup there into the uh, into the boxes. They come gaggle of cars on pit lane. Palovchuk, uh, 
Uh, Matt Stevens is on pit lane. We've got Hauser, Edverson, Corette, Lindrup. Uh, the ones I can currently see on our graphics that are all on pit lane now. All, we believe, changing tyres. Obviously, pit window still open for another 42 minutes. But these guys all wanted to change tyres. As we see, Carlock coming out, coming out uh, into Turn 1 alongside Polovchuk there. So Polovchuk has also jumped Carlock. So Colop really not judging the crossover point right in these wet conditions, I believe. But uh, Polovchuk, they're going wide there, maybe not getting the tyres up to temperature. Obviously, Colop's had two more laps there, and there was a bit of contact with Stewie is saying as well in my ears. So maybe Colop there just uh, sending it down the inside, not too happy with the uh, state after he's in after these pit stops, having to chase down another 4.6 seconds ahead to the Audi that is currently with the effective race lead here. Polovchuk all over the back of Colop there as we jump to a replay of the move down the inside from Hugo Collar on Polovchuk there. And yeah, really, it's a little tap on the uh, on the left rear of Polovchuk, really unsettled that Porsche through the corner there. Wondering if those guys are going to have to have any damage they're going to have to carry now for the rest of the race as they go side by side again through the kink at turn eight, in through turn nine here. Interesting to see if anyone's going to be able to get any extra grip. Obviously, now the racing line is the place to be here. Another bit of potential contact here as we... Uh, jump back on a race replay down here in three six and seven yeah Polovchuk returning the favor there to Collot and uh yeah he's pushed him out wide there so uh Polovchuk maybe not too happy with the state of the movers they come side by side I believe that's Joe Dorber and really uh sorry the 64 of Dixon Chen there into turn one there so again going to be running side by side all the way down is the Porsche going to be able to have the grip to hang it around the outside on the wet track there yeah he just cuts across the nose John yeah, textbook move there from Joe Dorber. Set it up in turn one. Got a great run down into two. And managed to swoop around the outside of Dixon Chen in the Audi R8 number 64. And uh, Stewart's all very quiet in the chats tonight at the moment. I'm not seeing any movement at all. Although furious analyzing going on as well. As we see a race replay here from Andy Boardman. Uh, not sure what we're going to be watching here. Through turn 12, jumps on the power and just loses it, noses it into the Armco. And it's going to be a rotten race already and straight, jumps straight back to the pits, probably to retire the car after the lap one incident and spinning himself on maybe his in-lap. Uh, not something you want to be doing. So Andy Boardman probably with a drop round to take this one. And uh, Hubert Hauser um, still rounds the fight with... I believe that's quite right behind, uh, possibly on that one. And we now start seeing some stewards as uh, I start talking about them. Uh, but it seems like they've woken up. Um, Jake Boswell tonight, our head reporter. And we have an incident on lap one, turn two, involving the 23 and the 60. Five seconds for the 23, leaves no room on exit. Incident on lap one, turn three, involving the 23 and the 54, deemed a racing incident with no significant loss to each car. And an incident on lap one, turn 13, involving the 180 and the 23. Five seconds for the 180 for significant avoidable contact. Position returned, but penalty not reduced due to the severity of the incident. Uh, an incident on lap one, turn four, involving the 777 and the 60, deemed a racing incident. And for now, that is all we have. So still plenty more for the stewards to catch up on so far. And of course, the big one at turn four is the one that we're all kind of looking out for who was deemed at fault there as uh, Malho is now technically your car in the lead on the track after the stops are cycled through track has now dropped down to greasy which is normally the point where you want to give it a lap or two and then start jumping on to the dry tires pit window of course open for just under 39 minutes and just open uh, the race just over 40 minutes in length at the moment as John Eraser and Tom Shipston find themselves down pit lane so Eraser gonna slip down a few positions there but still Cassiaro for the moment your race leader a um, bit of a shock there weren't expecting to see him so high up and uh, Daly in P2 Nico Kumpu P3 as we cut forward to Daly and Kumpu now about to start taking lumps out of each other Ferrari on Mercedes as they come rounds turn 11 and 12 race leader the kind of triangle car you see on the circuit map just ahead rounding into turn 12 ahead of them now as we watch back from Jordan Daly's just gamers 
197 Mercedes AMG GT3 Evo. Looking at the front of the Ferrari 488, of course, another Evo version. And uh, the Nico Kumpu just trying to size up daily. Wonder if Kumpu is going to try the kind of undercut here, dive into the pit lane, or maybe Daly's going to go. Daly has gone, and Kumpu stays out. So Kumpu going for the overcut on Daly. And uh, let's see if Daly can get, us, of course, a clean pit stop in the bag. Uses a little bit of the exit curb in the pit lane, slams on the brakes for the 50 board. This time is present, unlike at Mizano, where it did a mysterious disappearance and caught a few drivers out. Nico Kumpu becomes your race leader for the moment as Cassiaro is also in the pits in the Porsche. Chris Downing, of course, with the five, plus five seconds to his name. He has already served a pit stop, so no need to serve that five seconds now. That'll be added on to his race timer at the end as we see Tudor Boudou, Carlos Calateud coming down pit lane as well. And uh, the RPMS car, Matt Stevens, finds himself behind John Eraser on track now. Stevens looking very racy, as I said earlier in the practice sessions, looking very strong indeed in the RPMS liveried car. As uh, Daniel Crimson, probably, if he's watching, will say, thank God he's finally picked delivery it's only taken him three rounds to be able to set it up properly for the broadcasting team and as they round through the final turn no move to be had at the moment although if matt stevens can maximize the exit he does so all over the astroturf catches the damp part of it of course astroturf very absorbent when it comes to water it's one of those bits you want to stay off until the track goes fully dry eraser with a little bit of a weave there maybe trying to generate tire temperatures or size up how far stevens was behind as uh, we see a car leaving the pit lane, just trying to work out who that could be. Possibly Cassiaro uh, slipping down the order. P7 currently. Uh, Jordan Daly is the car I think I spotted. There you go. You see Matt Stevens just ahead. Daly down now in to P13 in the running order. And uh, the Just Gamers 197 car. Nico Kumpu, provisionally your race leader, still yet to take a pit stop. Joe Dorba and Dixon Chen still to take theirs as well as we ride on board with the Ferrari. Nico Kumpu staying out once again. I'm wondering what his strategy is here because crazy track, the Pirellis are going to be overheating by quite a bit now, Callum. I think this is a mistake by Nico Kumpu. Uh, Stewie's saying that Ferraris are about one second a lap quicker than wets right now. I think... Uh, Unless Nico Kumpu has somehow managed to go out on uh, on dry tyres at the start of the race and managed to hold that sort of position, which I very much doubt with the way the uh, the track was and how competitive this field is, I think he's making a mistake here. I don't think he's uh, he's making the right choice. I think these guys need to get in and get on dry tyres. Um, the track not looking to to go any any uh, dry than it actually is already. As uh, Dewey's trying to give us a shot and see what tyres he's on, but all I see is just a black and a bit of Ferrari there. So. Uh, Nice try, Stewie, but unfortunately you can't really tell which tyres he's on there. Uh believe that is that dry, John? Is, I can't that, tell. I'm not sure if that's a yellow stripe or the or the rim reflecting in the night sky of the Hungara ring. Uh, we're going to have to wait for some kind of floodlight to come by, which of course are not very common in the uh, kind of race of Hungara, shall we say. Uh, looking at Joe Dorber's tyre, that's definitely a dry tyre. Can't see any any yellow at all no matter if i sit up straighter to try and offset my monitor's brightness a little bit um that definitely looks like a wet tire for joe dorba so he's going to want to be coming in very soon indeed and i mean even if nico kumpu was should we say theorized let's you know spitball a little bit even if he was on the dry tires at the beginning they are going to be absolutely destroyed by this point so i mean there's not going to be a lot of pace difference in it as we see a little backfire of the mercedes kind of illuminating briefly the front wheel arch of that car and uh i think a lot of cars are going to be on dry tires by this Ooh. point they've left it late enough in the race that it, it ends up you know greasy um as i think you've just spotted what i've spotted joe I'm dorba just, with yeah joe with the drive-through panel i'm just having a quick look at the stewards with a massive amount of instance for uh for us to go through there so uh I can't remember exactly where you got up to, but obviously we've got the instance on lap one, turn four, involving the 6470, warning for car 64 for avoidable contact. Uh, lap one, turn four, again for the 70, and the 30, warning for the car 70, for not holding the brakes after the incident. Uh, lap one, turn one, involving the 23 and the 14, and the 38, uh, a racing incident for minor contact. Lap one, turn one, involving the 25623, racing incident for minor contact. Uh, lap 1, turn 1 involving the 9 and the 30, warning for a poor rejoin. Uh, lap 2, turn 8 involving the 67 and 64, racing incident, minor contact. 
lap two turn eight involving the 180 on the 99. Five seconds for the car 180 overtaken with contact. So uh, that's Edmerson again. So he's up to 10 seconds now. Obviously, as we said, he has made his stop. So that will be added on at the end of the race, we imagine. And confirming that, Kumpu is on dry. So he has made the dry tyre work while it's been raining. So uh, Nico Kumpu on dry. So I wonder what the state of those dry tyres are. We see as the telemetry comes on there. So uh, uh, yeah, Kumpu has managed to make dry tyres work. And I believe that was... Uh, was Marlon on wet there? Or is that just the uh, the graphic uh, messing up, I believe? Uh, is that Marlon on wet? No, he's on dry. Sorry, he's on dry. Uh, it's just the graphic being playing fiddle with me here. As we come back to the stewards' reports, uh, we've got an incident on lap 2, turn 10 involving the 92.4 and the 99 race against the minor contact. An incident on lap 3, turn 13 involving the 256. Uh, Racing and no one else apparently. I uh, don't know if the students are messed up there. Racing instant minor contact. Uh, sorry, involving the 699 that's been posted twice. Uh, and it's instant on lap three, turn 14, involving the 180 and the 197. Racing instant minor contact. Lap three, turn 14 as well, involving the 64 and the 30. Uh, another racing incident for minor contact. A lot of minor contact here due to wet conditions here. Uh, lap five, turn one, uh, involving the 924. Uh, racing incident for minor contact. A lap six, turn two, involving the 180 and the 46. Racing incident for minor contact. Lap eight, turn eight, involving the 197 and the 180. No further action. 180 goes wide, causing contact, and then takes themselves out. No significant loss for the 197. And then the big one here at uh, the lap six, turn nine, involving the 79 and the 777. Drive through uh, number 77, take out on the 79 there. So uh, that's where that drive through came from. Yeah, finally worked out where the triple seven has gone wrong and they have served to drive through and they are now in to serve their mandatory stop as well. As we see Matt Stevens up the inside of Pozniakov and it's going to bring John a racer alongside as well in the BMW M4 around the outside of turn 14 is not really where you want to be. Although a racer hopefully doing the old up and under jumping on the power a lot earlier big little wiggle out of there and we know the Porsche struggles in a straight line the M4 chasing the back of the Porsche trying to maximize all of the slipstream that he can and we're being told by Stewie Pozniakov still on wet tires at this stage as well which is very very interesting indeed and that might be why we're seeing him struggle compared to John Eraser looks much more confident in the corners compared to the Barless Esports Porsche so two very mixed strategies we got Kumpu obviously started on, on the dry tires we had Osniakov potentially starting on dries, and that's why he came in, took wets, and now he's on wets. Is he trying to make him work to the end? 32 minutes just over still to go. And uh, I think that's going to be a long time for these Pirelli wets to kind of claw onto. Uh, of course, if he does take another trip down pit lane, a lot of ground to be lost there. And uh, yeah, Dan Evertson now coming under fire from a another BMW, the 957 of Richard Withel. Uh, timing not yet updated. Uh, Everson, of course, ahead on the road now, Withel behind. And uh, Carlos Calatier with the, uh, the bonnet slightly open on the Vulcan horse car. On the dry tires for Carlos as well. You see the yellow Pirelli stickers on the side of that. So coming in maybe to fix a little bit of damage. Not sure what's gone wrong there. Whether he's picked up on the Astro turf and the M4 has just bitten very hard. Spun him into the wall, such as your Andy Borman. John Eraser now up the inside into P9. Textbook move there into turn 12, into turn 11, sorry. Down into 12, he's going to flash the lights towards, I'm not sure if that's towards Matt Stevens or back towards Pozniakov to say thank you very much indeed. But Pozniakov looks like he could come back into 13. Looking very close indeed and Jordan Daly behind. So Pozniakov now becomes the kind of middle car in the train here. And uh, you just see how much ground John Eraser now pulls on corner exit. Pozniakov pulls it up again in the braking zone. But the BMW on the dry tyres definitely looking like the one to be. So Pozniakov's going to probably want to have to think about coming in or he's just going to keep going backwards through this field at the moment and uh now as we have a slight lull pit stops have gone through and shoot now would be a great time to talk about what we have coming up this week here at rci tuesday is of course still our empty slot due to the R uh, i racing championship finishing just over two weeks ago and uh wednesday this week takes our team championship to round two at zolder uh, forza italia took the round one victory however have since signed out with john daly pulls off to the side there flash of the lights not sure what happened there we're going to see a race replay on board from daly daily to the outside in turn two positive on the inside squeezes quite hard daily hits the curb big wiggle well held there still a lot of moisture and then just kind of pulls off to the side I think he's not um, happy with Poznikov. I think Poznikov may be 
braked a little bit earlier than Daly was expecting. Obviously, Daly on dry is on a dry track. Daly still stopped at the hairpin, yeah, actually. Yeah, Daly, Daly um, still stopped. So, it, maybe a hardware issue? I was going to say, maybe a wheel issue. Maybe something's disconnected. It looked a bit strange how he suddenly straightened up and just went straight off the track there. But uh, wait for some confirmation on that. I'm just going to quickly jump in uh, also and say that we've got a bit more breathing room for Marlow in that battle with between him and Nico Kumpu. He's got 17 seconds to gain as Hugo Collot has been given a five second penalty on lap nine, turn three for a uh, overtake with contact between him and the car number 15 and not giving the position back. So that was between him and Polovchuk there, who has just actually taken the fastest lap. So uh, Polovchuk looking to make some gains back and get that position back on Hugo Collot there. A little bit of uh, inter-team rivalry here. Rudy Filwalter and Les Stevenson now about to take the battle to each other uh, with uh, Pavel Gajda just behind in the 924 BMW M4 as well. Uh, Rudy and Les, uh, two drivers you typically see roughly in the same area. So this is going to be one to watch as Rudy takes a much faster line out of the last turn. Tries to pick up a little bit of the slipstream, although Les is just about clawing onto the outside line. I think Rudy now pulling alongside onto the inside. He's got to be careful that Gajda doesn't take advantage of this one. One as well les does pinch him to the apex nicely rudy jumps on the power a little bit too early and gashta straight through the middle of both of them with les stevenson running over the curb traction control kicking in a little bit as well so stevenson now on the defense into turn two bill Malter around the outside turn three of course is going to become the inside for rudy can he make it stick he does quick dab of the brakes ahead and les drops two positions in what is essentially three corners as yellow for straighten now is around facing the wall let's have have a look what happened here on the inside the number 180 dan edwardson through turn one they go jelly hits the astro turf as i said earlier it's still a lot of moisture in there the track is still greasy you're still going to get some standing water in places and the astro turf is still very wet indeed as we cast our eyes to another race replay of matt stevens up the inside into turn two not sure who that was looks like maybe nico kumpu yeah yeah, Nico Kumpu there getting taken out by uh, Matt Stevens. So uh, Marlow is in the lead. I was going to say that Nico Kumpu seemed to have a worse lap. The guys seem to be closing up on him. They, uh, they gained quite a bit there. Matthew Kingston Lee on the side of the road as well. Uh, big damage to that BMW. I think that's what caused him to be in the pit lane. I don't know if he is. Oh, that's just happened. I'm actually getting from Stewie in my ear. So uh, he's got the damage back again and jumped straight to the pit lane. I imagine that's to Ricardo the car. We've also got word that uh, Jordan Daly uh, in the YouTube chat as well has uh, retired the car due to a red amount of damage on the engine. He got squeezed onto the curb. It downshifted and it went all the way to first gear. And uh, it's caused the engine to give up the ghost there. So unfixable damage there for uh, Jordan Daly. So very, very good of him to quickly cut off the track as we go back to Pavel well, uh, Gazda there, defending in that BMW from Rudy Filmalter, uh, I believe, who's, oh no, so it's Posnikov, sorry, so he's made the move on Posnikov and is now defending from Posnikov and Filmalter in the uh, Project Dream 94 BMW. Is that Porsche going to be able to hang it around the outside? I think it's still too damp out there to get the grip. And obviously, as we've said before, and we mentioned it on the six hour stream, there's always a car waiting in the wings behind. So if you two start battling, you've better Watch out for the third person to come through and just charge all the way through, just like uh, Pavel Gajda did on Poznikov and Filmalter when they were battling into Turn 1. Yeah, I say, it's always tricky when you're that third car in the train. You kind of want to bide your time and see what happens to the two ahead. Of course, if the door opens up and there's enough space for you to sneak on by, as Les Stevens runs into the back of Rudy Filmalter. Definitely a bump there into the chicane. I'm not sure if Rudy maybe braked a little bit earlier because he wasn't sure what Posnikov was going to do ahead. And it just caught Les slightly out. So some split of damage to the front of Les's car, some diffuser damage to the rear of Rudy's car. But that has not put him off at all. He was all over the back of Posnikov. I think these Pirellis are going to be absolutely screaming out on that Barlas Esports car as the track is now green which of course means the majority of all of the water has dispersed and it's, it's now, you know, a clean, fresh surface to lay some grip down on. So uh, the Pirelli's, uh, the Pirelli wet tires are not now going to be the one to be on. He's still got just over 25 minutes of racing to go and he doesn't peel off into the pit lane this time by. And I think Posnikov's going to really regret that decision. He's going to want to try and bin those car tires off as much as he can, as fast as he can, should we say. And, uh, we're going to start going to see the fastest lap kind of changing hands as well. Uh, Cassiaro, temporarily your fastest car 
on the field at the moment but of course as these dry tires come back into the window drivers start feeling where the grip is again of course you're going to see the fastest lap change hand a few times and we of course do award points for the fastest lap so if Posnikov's smart about it he could come in grab some Pirelli's reset the pressures and when the car's at its lightest of course with 24 minutes to go basically just turn it into a hot lap session and see if he can claim that fastest lap we know he can we know he's very fast in the Barless esports car so might be a move worth making as Hubert Hauser now finds himself to the inside of Joe Dorber. Tries to take a look. Dorber, last of the late breakers around the outside, swoops and cuts the nose off. Jelly Verstraten on the inside there as well. And uh, just behind, we've got another Ferrari lurking in the wings, ready to capitalize. Tom Shipston, I believe, uh, currently down in P20. So, of course, eager to score some more points as Verstraten gets out on the outside of turn uh, two of course will become the inside of three if you can make it stick but unfortunately the bmw just giving him a better run for his money as they head up the hill we jump on board now with the ground zero racing car of tom shipston the silver british masters champion and he's kind of cut his teeth in that series and then found his way up into the pro leagues as well so tom shipston very capable driver although don't often see him in these mid-engine platform cars so maybe picking something a little bit different for a little bit of fun uh, the bentley was his car of choice in the british Masters championship and did it very well indeed in the opening few rounds secured enough points to kind of tie him over to the end on his title defense and uh just kind of gonna sit in the wake of jelly straight and see if he makes a mistake at all see if he can you know get somewhere where the ferrari lacks ahead of course when you've got equal machinery callum we both know from casting the uh the one make series it's it's very hard to find a way past your opponent yeah we had uh that series was characterized by some massive trains as a uh, knowing back towards the front Hugo Collar with that fastest lap now uh, taking it back off Cassiaro so uh, he may have that five second penalty but he's still going to have to push he's got 23 minutes to gain effectively 11 seconds on Marlow in the Audi so the Audi's all out front again so uh, looks like at the moment the track's dry these Audis are very 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 fast cars uh, John but in the wet tracks it looks like the Porsche might have a bit of an edge in this series yeah, I thought the Porsche would be the one to pick this time out. We saw him very strong in the kind of pre-testing this week and, of course, in the practice session. But like you say, as soon as the track dries out, the Audis just kind of ignite the timing boards and really fire themselves up. Of course, Colot still just under six seconds to the good of Malho. And, of course, with that five-second penalty, he's not only going to have to gain five seconds past Malho, he's also going to have to gain another five seconds to keep the lead if he does manage that one as well. And uh, back to the RCI calendar this week. Uh, of course, Tuesday is empty due to the I racing finishing. And uh, Wednesday begins our team champion, uh, or takes our team championship to Zolder at round two. Forza Italia taking round one victory, but have since signed out, uh, thus promoting no time gained racing to first overall. Muppet racing in second and team Vormont in third. Uh, Thursday continues uh, our season 12 championship, of course, with a British GT theme, GT3 and GT4 tour the British GT calendar heading to Spa for the finale and uh, last time out Alton Park was won by Tom Bryant with a dominant performance in the connection loss racing BMW M4 and uh, Javier Marquez in second and Andy Boardman in third GT4 was won again by Harry Conway with Marco Ripper in second and John Eraser who you see on your screens just ahead here of Nico Kumpu in third so no stranger to, to fighting cars for position and Kumpu on the outside now down into turn two Eraser on the inside if Kumpu can hang it round the outside of turn two he goes for the old switcheroo up and under cuts it too close to the grass hits the grass bounces all over the show it's a real poor run towards turn three and Eraser just about claws on to that one as Pos Osniakov finally comes down pit lane, ditching the wet tyres, hopefully in favour of some drives. I'd hate to see what those tyres are like on that car when they come off. And uh, Friday this week begins our sprint challenge for season 10. 10 seasons of this we've done now, and it is, is a popular championship as always. With round one heading to Donington Park, only 18 drivers so far completed pre-qualifying, so still plenty of space left for that one if you do fancy your chances in that one then head on over to racerci.com where you can find all information on that event and uh, finally saturday this week uh, night owl heads to zolder for their finale as well uh, timothy flamger still leads gt3 pro overall from alex rogers and joe dorber uh, with gt3 silver led by michelle Montaigne from alexander Auckland. so they switch around in points overall and adam carlisle now up into third as well and uh, of course with the weekend just gone 
kicked off our RCI six hour challenge series brought to you by AK Esports, Fanatec and Go Setups uh, with both the three free to enter splits and the paid splits taking stage on Saturday and Sunday. And uh, from what I heard, even some fantastic racing down in the free split, uh, with split one being taken by Armamentario from Vaison Motorsports and Full Boost Racing. Uh, the paid split, uh, some great racing. Uh, Callum, you witnessed some of it as well with myself in the comms booth for an hour. And uh, we had great racing for six solid hours. And we always had something going on somewhere in the field of 49 very competitive cars. Uh, with Williams Esports Team Razor taking the victory with Charlie Crossland and Tinko van der Velde uh, from the Team 1 FF Ferrari. And then, of course, the comeback drive of the race from Veloce, the UK OG entry with Malinowski and Boothby uh, taking the bottom step of the podium after a whopping comeback uh, through the field from, I believe, P40 on lap one all the way back up into P3. Uh, so kudos to those. And if you want to be like Tinko van der Velde, Jesse told me something very interesting. He cut his teeth here at RCI with us. Uh, he signed up a lot of the time. Uh, he was in the silver category, believe it or not. Um, so not in the pros, not, you know, top split esports league, but down in the silver category. And of course, he has developed and honed his skills across ACC to become a race winner with us here at the RCI six hour challenge. Uh, but back to tonight, of course, Nico Kumpu still behind John Eraser. No real moves to be made at the moment. Nico probably going to be sizing up Eraser, see where he's going to be weaker, see where he can exploit the BMW M4. And you can almost see Nico, Callum, getting a little bit frustrated with his driving. Yeah, yeah. was that a bit of a tap there through the corner? I don't think that was physically on the camera. I don't know if uh, he wanted to avoid the back end of that BMW. But it almost looked like he gave him a little bit of a nudge there through the, uh, through the, slow, through the slow corner of, I believe it was turn 11. Uh, they come down the uh, back straight and we jump to Tom Shipston in the Ground Zero Racing, number 60 Ferrari, uh, just managing to make an overtake on, I believe, fellow Ferrari. Uh, that was frustrating in the 67 there. So uh, Tom Shipston managing to jump up position as the cameras jump back again to another Ferrari battle of uh, Nico Kumpu and John Aresa there as we jump to a replay to see what happened down into turn one there. Really late on the brakes there, down the outside, I believe that is uh, the Ferrari of Nico Kumpu there. So, John Arisa managed to hold off that position down in through down turn two. And he's still ahead going through the kink of turn uh, three, up towards through the end of split, uh, sector one into turn four here. The kink, no one's really going to try and go side by side through here unless you've got really big balls to go down there. And dart into the outside of the Ferrari now, so this track has clearly dried up. Probably one of the reasons why the Porsche had the pit for dries after staying out on wet for so long. Uh, loses a little bit through turn five there, in through six and seven now. All about getting a good exit out towards turn eight. Try and get as close behind and just see how close you can follow through. He's getting some really good runs through the corners in that mid-engine Ferrari. Going to be really good on the rotation here compared to the BMW. BMW strong on the exits compared to the Ferrari here. He's going to have to try and get a really strong run through out onto the back straight here and just that that BMW going defensive there doesn't really need to unless he's just trying to cool off the tires maybe a little bit doesn't need to he's too far ahead for the Ferrari to make a move down into 11 going into 12 here so going narrow both cars going very narrow into turn 12 uh, following through again he's now going to be thinking can I set a move up for turn one just to note as well uh, Palovchuk now with the fastest lap taking it from Hugo Collar who's gained two seconds on Marlow here but I believe Marlow is just sort of managing the pace, I'd imagine, up front as he is not really going to lose nine seconds total in the next 14 minutes. Uh, Nico Kumpu still just struggling on exits, really, compared to that BMW. Yeah, not too sure if Kumpu's maybe got his tyre pressures a little bit wrong compared to John Eraser, but Eraser definitely looking a lot better on corner exit, it seems. Kumpu's trying for the old switcheroo out of most of these corners, but just misjudging it, running up the kerb and hitting the grass, and it's just... You know impacting his lap every time he tries it so i don't want to try and get a little bit closer before he does try and put john eraser off no stranger to fighting hard battles lap after lap after lap of course eraser one of the regulars here at rci that we see most mondays and uh, a lot of the time in in every single event shall we say a uh, very regular driver with us here as pedro marquez looks to the back of chris downing uh, briefly there although doesn't actually need to do a lot with downing with five seconds he's just got to kind of stay within the window and you said nobody would go side by side through turn four but les stevenson and dan edverson certainly trying it 
indeed. Dane on Brit action here as they head up towards the chicane uh, of turns uh, uh, six and seven. Uh, Everton to the inside, of course, will become the outside. And then Les has got the inside again for the next corner of turn eight, where we saw Edverson backwards earlier. Edverson still trying to take it around the outside That's into turn nine. The gets the inside line on this one as well. But then Les gets the inside for turn 10. This is just the constant switchback nature of the Hungara ring. Dan sticks it to the inside into turn 11, where sector three begins. 12 is normally a very good passing point, but I don't think Dan has got enough legs on that Porsche. Sizes up a move. Les gives him enough room on the inside there. Everton all over the curb. Les around the outside, of course, going defensive now into turn 13. The penultimate corner runs a little bit wide to try and cut the BMW off from doing the old switcheroo. Everton trying to maximize corner exit as much as he can, but kind of detriments himself by nearly running into the pit lane. And Les Stevenson, what a fantastic fight that was all the way from turn four to turn 14, near enough side by side. And he, he claws on for another lap as Kumpu still sizing up John Eraser around the outside into turn one. Still nothing to be had, but now down into turn two, Eraser on the defensive. Kumpu to the outside again, just trying to offset him enough and pinch him enough to the inside that it allows a run around the outside. And he, he's still trying to get the outside to become the inside into three and still no move to be had. But it looks like he's, he's just trying to make that Ferrari a big distraction in Eraser's mirrors. And I know Eraser will just be looking forward at this point not staring back in his mirrors at that Ferrari and he's just constantly placing the M4 in, in the best position as we see a great underside view there of John Eraser's diffuser from the uh, splitter cam of Nico Kumpu I don't think those guys could get any closer through turn 5 there Callum I think the two cars became one there definitely uh, between through turn 5 and uh, I eat my words two cars can go side by side through turn 4 <laughs> Clearly, I have been proven wrong by some of the guys here at RCI. Just a note as well, look, looking up towards the front of the field again, uh, Hugo Collar is uh, still gaining his. He had the fastest lap, which now gone to uh, Pozniakov, who's uh, pitted and done that tactic of putting on fresh tyres for drives uh, to try and set the fastest lap. But he's, uh, he's gained another second already on uh, on the race leader Marlow here. So uh, he's, he's gaining some quite significant time. He might be on the back of uh, back of Marlow soon if uh, we're not careful. As we're looking at Edverson here, played still by that 10 second penalty, still battling here with Les Stevenson. Are these guys going to go side by side for another lap here and prove me even more wrong? I hope they do, as uh, I believe that's Edverson there trying to look around the outside into the uh, hairpin of 12. Uh, sorry, yeah, it's 12. 313 now they come as we cut to Joe Dorber here going in through 12 as well. Just uh, battling away with, I believe that's. BMW ahead of Richard Withall, he's made a move on there. So Joe Dorber up to 15th place here and maybe looking at uh, another promotion once Dan Edverson has his penalty. But Dan Edverson, speaking of him, down the inside into turn one here. Is Led Stevens going to be able to hang it around the outside? No, he's not. So straight down the inside there for Dan Edverson. Nice, simple move into turn one. But Les Stevens has got that slipstream. Can he bring that Porsche back and make it side by side again as we jump to Nico Kimpu? Still battling there with, I believe that's John Eraser still ahead of him there. Through the kink, not going side by side, these guys. But he will go side by side into the hairpin at turn five. Long corner, trying to hold it around the outside down. Are they going to go side by side through the hairpin? A little bit of a touch and shoulder barge at the doors. Late on the brakes there for Nico Kumpu. He's going to run it around the outside of the hairpin there. Over the curves on the outside. A little bit of a wiggle. A little bit of a touch from both of them. And a wiggle for John Oasa there in the BMW there. Running right nose to tail here. I think that split cam would look quite interesting with that little bit. Maybe a touch through there as well. All we can see there is some headlights uh, flashing through the S-Beds coming down onto the back straight now. Here's Nico Kumpu. He's got a better exit than John Oasa there. John Oasa goes defensive coming down into turn 11 here. The 90 degree right-hander. Nico Kimpu, maybe not going to be able to hang it around the outside, but definitely going for the switchback there. Had to uh, really jam the brakes on a little bit there to avoid the back of that BMW there. Great car placement there by John Racer. Yeah, Racer certainly mounting the defensive drive against Nico Kumpu. You can see Nico getting very frustrated in his steering inputs, his braking inputs. Constantly on and off the brakes, as you see there through turn 14. Trying to get the much better run onto the back of a racer's car down into turn one. I think. He knows where a racer is weakest. It seems to be at the top of the hill, turn four. Going into turn five as we now jump on board a helmet cam with Nico Kumpu jinking left and right, forces a razor to go defensive. Last of the late breakers around the outside goes Nico Kumpu in the two, five, six. Just about enough room given by a racer on that one. Just runs Nico over the curb. 
Them four just about with enough legs, but not quite enough of a defensive line into two. Kumpu on the brakes alongside, side by side. A little rub through two, forces a racer out wide. They now switch back to three. I think a racer is just about clear of the Ferrari. A flash of the fog lights there to say, I'm a little bit displeased by that one, but I think it was all fair game and a little bit of tit for tat there, Callum. It was kind of, you know, equally given out, should we say. Yeah, a racer down the inside there, bash the doors there between the two cars. Uh, Nico could be really not going to be happy with that. They both lost that racer, I believe, spinning out on the inside there. And who is that in the BMW behind? It's Gazda. Move. It's Gazda there in the BMW behind. So he's brought into the fight now. Nico could be coming through the chicane there. So uh, a racer losing out big there with that, uh, that move down the inside there. I think the stewards are going to have to have a look at that. Another note again, Hugo Carr has made another one and a half seconds in the last minute on Marlow. Has Marlow got some kind of issue or is he just... As, as Collins has got the pace on Marlow at the minute, he's, he's, he's gaining massively equal machinery, both in Audis. Maybe Marlow just knows that he doesn't, maybe he just doesn't think he has to push as we jump to uh, Casario, uh, still up in P6, great race for him, battling with Pedro Marquez for P5, he's going to hang out around the outside in the Porsche on the Lamborghini. He doesn't quite get the run off the exit, that, uh, that Porsche with the rear engine, maybe not quite as stable on corner exit compared to the mid-engine Lamborghini. And uh, Marquez just dives it into the hairpin at turn two just to cut the nose off uh, there. So uh, Cassiaro will follow through turn four, uh, three up towards the hill, top of the hill at turn four, crossing the first sector split. Another game by Hugo Collett now, 1.1 to the race leader. So uh, really massively gaining time here. But Cassiaro has lost a little bit through turn four. So turn five just following that Lamborghini ahead. And we've got Chris Downing with a five second penalty. So these guys are probably going to get promoted by the end of the race unless Chris Downing can pull some magic here as we jump to Tudor Voodoo in a battle with Linda up the Dane and Hausa as well in the uh, BMW ahead the 79 so the 64 of uh, Moderna Motorsports Tudor Voodoo there running very wide through the last corner really trying to maximise the run down on that BMW into turn one slipstream for Tudor Voodoo big slipstream for the Audi of Linda up there in the back but Tudor Voodoo with the better run of all of them here is he going to try and move down to the inside he jinxed to the right hand side there but i think he's a bit, a bit too late on the uh on the move there he's not going to have enough space to put it down the inside and linder up there with uh, a little look to the outside of tudor voodoo but uh losing a little bit on the exit with a bit of a shape of the tail of that audi uh hugo call up another quarter of a second gain in the in that last sector again within a second now that gap for the lead a definitely slight gap between Kolot and Malo about to become a fight down to 0.774 last time by in a sector line. So Kolot has to get past Malo and he then has to pull out another five seconds to the good in the last seven and a half minutes. And not too sure if he can do that. But going back to your point on Marquez and Cassiaro, all they've really got to do is just follow Chris Downing around for the for the remainder of the seven and a half minutes of the race as we see there Dan Edverson getting past Rudy Filmalter. Of course, Dan with a 10 second penalty. He's going to have to claim another two seconds or so on top of what he's got already uh, to be able to clear a racer and Les, uh, uh, sorry, Rudy Filmalter, Les Stevenson and John Eraser, of course, just behind him. So. Worst thing you want to do is kind of make all this progress and then go backwards because of penalty. So hopefully if he gets towards the back of Gadgeter, he can kind of drive cleanly around him as well. As we now see the battle for the lead begin. The race eSport team, Belgian driver Hugo Kolot. Fantastic driving so far in rounds one and two. We ride on board now. A lot of traffic ahead. We've got Linder up in the Audi. Gets clear out of the way. Says, go on, boys. Get it on. I don't want to be part of this one as that creates a nice gap now between themselves and Tudor Boodoo and Hubert Hauser, two drivers ahead. Of course, again, fighting for position. So he could be using his traffic to the advantage here, Hugo Kolot. Of course, if Malho runs up the back of either one of them, it's going to promote Kolot to the lead and then he's going to have to drive away cleanly. Very late on the brakes from both drivers. You see the, the kind of time gained on the back markers, shall we say. Of course, Boodoo, no stranger to, to pace. Boodoo gives up his fight with Hauser to allow the leaders through and ironically he's let Linder up almost through look in the mirror the top of your screen two cars side by side switching place Audi up the inside and Boodoo flash of the lights very displeased at that one but shouldn't have scrubbed so much speed down to turn two just opened the doors of Linder up and he's lost the back of Hauser completely as we see Kolot now jinking out behind trying to size up where Hauser is in relation uh, to this fight and it looks like Malho forces the door open on Hauser allows both Kolot and uh, and Malho through into the chicane they go still splitter to diffuser literally cannot separate these guys at all but just over five and a half minutes left to go Callum 
I think the penalty is gonna gonna cost uh, Colot this one. Yeah, without a penalty, Colot would be massively in line for a race win here if he can get past uh, Malo. He's really looking quite aggressive. He's gained so much time here, so he's, he's clearly quicker on certain parts of the circuit. So he's got to figure out as quickly as possible where that is and where he can get past. Uh, jumping back to that traffic there, it's something that, oh, as we see Hugo kind of really gaining on the brakes down into turn 11 there, that's probably one of those points where he's been gaining a lot of lap time. Um, something we saw in the six hour there is traffic affecting races, both for the cars being lapped and the cars lapping. Uh, either of them can be losing or gaining time here, so uh, look to see if anyone else, I believe we've got the car 67 ahead, uh, which is frustrating, I believe. Uh, so uh, hopefully he'll get out of the way as he seems to be running by himself. We don't seem to have any other big fights uh, that are going to cause these guys any issues. So it's going to be a straight fight here. Obviously, with that five second penalty, Colot's going to dive to the inside here for turn one here, sending it right down. He's going to try and cut off the switchback of uh, Richard Marlow on the exit here. He's got the inside, obviously, for this long turn two uh, down at the hairpin here as they run side by side, literally even into the corner here. Going to have to hold it on the apex to stop that switchback again from happening. Hugo Colot is through on Richard Marlow, John. Yeah, now all Colot's got to do is pull a good five seconds in the next four minutes or so. That's more than a second every minute. He's going to really have to get the hammer down and get driving like it's a qualifying phase almost as Joe Dorba now takes it to Andre Dixon Chen in the number 64 Audi R8 all over the entry curve there on the left-hand side trying to open up the corner as much as he can. Of course, Joe Dorba uh, with a drive-through penalty earlier was having a really good race up until that point. So very backwards he went from there on out of course two trips down pit lane not what you want to be doing and Pozniakov has proved that one down in p22 although with the fastest lap ironically of the race so he will take some small amount of points away from the hungaro ring and joe dorber is going to try and find his way hopefully past dixon chen down into turn one although doesn't look like he's close enough really for much of a gain in the slipstream wonder if he's just going to play this one safe and see if dixon chen makes a mistake and uh gap is forever opening on the Audi R8 a very quick car in a straight line we know the Porsche does struggle and speaking of Porsches this man here Cassiaro great drive from today Callum he's had a rotten start to the season but he's really really pulled it back and of course you see just ahead there with the onboard camera Chris Downing is still within earshot so the five seconds of Downing is going to push him down to about P6 is going to promote Marquez up to five and Cassiaro hopefully providing this battle doesn't end in tears as he goes for the inside in the penultimate corner. Marquez gets a little bit of oversteer. Not sure if there was a rub there, but Cassiaro looking to try and still make more improvements in that red, white and black number 54 Porsche. It's, I thought this was over laps ago as we see uh, Joe Dorber up the inside into the chicane of Andre Dixon Chen. Dispatches of him very nicely. That's how you run side by side through that segment of corners. Uh, Joe Dorber now up to P14 when he crosses the timing line. And uh, of course, Andre Dixon Chen down to P15. But I thought Cassiaro and Marquez kind of chilled down a little bit. I wasn't expecting Cassiaro to try and make a move on Marquez, but um, he's definitely trying, Callum. Cassiaro really trying to get that P4, obviously uh, really just making a huge effort there. He's struggling a little bit with the car, they're twitching on exits, I think. Uh, maybe setting the car up for the wet and just during the dry, he's just struggling a little bit compared to the Lamborghini ahead. Gap and the lead, by the way, seven tenths of a second. So uh, with only just under a minute, two minutes to go, sorry, I don't think Hugo Collins going to be able to scrape that five second gap out that he needs. Yeah, uh, Marlo gaining on him now, four tenths is down to, so... Uh, I think Richard Marley might have this in the bag. Commentators curse avoiding as you jump to the guy with the fastest lap of the race. Posnikov here as we jump to a little race replay. Let's see here. Posnikov up the inside of, I believe that's uh, the new portions of the series. I can't remember the uh, uh, the name there. As I was being corrected in my ear there at the same time. Co uh, correct there. Sorry. Uh, yeah. For GPX racing, the number 85 Porsche. Just struggling a little bit there compared to Posnikov. Posnikov obviously with that pace to get through. And Marlo right on the back of that uh, body ahead of Collar as the back marker gets out of the way. Right tucked under that diffuser. So it's going to be a battle for the on track win here as we cut onto what will be the last lap. I imagine 56 seconds left remaining on the race clock. So Hugo Collar, unless there's some big incident here between him and Marlo, is not going to get the race win unless he can stretch out a five, well, four and a half second gap between him and Marlo in one lap. 
This would have to be a truly insane lap from Hugo Kola or a disastrous one from Marlow as they cut through the kink at four. Marlow gaining time on Hugo Kola, really just really aggressive here. He just has to stick behind Hugo Kola. He really wants to win on track here. He's lost a bit of time through turn four coming into the, uh, sorry, through turn five, coming into six and seven here over the curbs they cut against these really aggressive sausage curbs we see in the Formula One races that uh, can really put you offline and destroy your car if you're not careful here. Uh, Chris Downing still battling ahead of Marquez and Cassiaro. Cassiaro is still losing out compared to Pedro Marquez here. But they're both going to jump Chris Downing here as we look from the back of Hugo Collot's race eSport team, number 14 Audi, at the Richard Marlow, number 38 Audi, chasing him down into turn 11 here. Is he going to try and make a move or is he just going to stick sensible and just take the win in the timing screens after the... Uh, uh, it's adjusted for the five second penalty. Yeah, he's not diving down the inside into 12. Well, he's really gained out. Is he going to make a move into the last corner here? I don't think so. I think it's going to be Hugo Carr. He takes a race win on track as they round the final corner. But it's going to be Richard Marlowe in the 38 Audi. He was going to take the overall win after the penalties are applied here. They come across the line. No sale. Two tenths of a second there after an hour of racing between the two cars. And Polovchuk coming across the line there to take P3. Chris Downing is... Uh, currently coming through the final two corners with a very fast Pedro Marquez and Cassiara in pursuit here. Cassiara has lost a little bit of time to Pedro Marquez on that last lap. Chris Downing is going to cross the line in P4 here. Is he stretched out enough of a gap? I believe he's going to finish just behind Cassiara. Matt Stevens is too far behind him at 77 uh, AMG Mercedes to gain any positions off of the uh, time penalties here. But yeah, Matt Stevens uh, is going to finish in P7. Pedro Marquez will finish P4, Cassiaro will finish P5, uh, Downing P6, and yeah, Matt Stevens crossing the line there to finish in P7. Nico Kumpu here with uh, the uh, incident earlier on is going to finish, I imagine, in P8 as we jump back to Tom Shipston in the number 17 Ferrari, battling away with, I believe that was Richard Whittle ahead of him in the uh, in the BMW there. Yeah, Richard Whittle. So last lap battle here coming down. These are going to be two of the last cars to cross the line, I believe. So Richard Whittle battling away with Tom Shipston. Is he going to be able to try and move, make a move around the hairpin? No, great power place from the BMW there. So I don't think, unless he tries one big lunge or gets a really good exit on Richard Whittle here, as the car ahead, Dixon Chen crosses the line to finish P15. Richard Whittle will just about hold on compared to Tom Shipson to finish P16 and hold on at the line. He just about does that. Really close there. Two tenths of a second. Tom Shipson with a flash of the lights to commend the close battle there as we jump to the standings for the end of the race. Yeah, standings for the end of the race. Of course, Malho promoted up into P1 from Hugo Kola, of course, with the five second penalty to his name. Pavlachok comes in P3, and then we've got Marquez and Cassiaro in fourth and fifth. Downing, of course, down in to P6 with Matt Stevens not gaining from Downing's penalty. Down in P7, Nika Kumpu P8, Pavel Gajda in P9, Rudy Filmalter in 10th. Dan Edvardson, unfortunately, slipping back down, of course, with the 10 seconds, was safe from Les Stevens, so Les Stevens takes the 12th. Joe Dorber, 13th. Andre Dixon Chen in 14th. John Eraser in 15th. Richard Withall in 16th. Of course, Tom Shipston, we saw on your screen there, P17. Kelly Verstraten down in P18. Uh, Lindrup in 19th. And then we've got Tudor Boodoo, of course, in P20. And then scrolling down slightly, we've got the uh, fastest lap of the race, of course, uh, with Pozniakov in the Balas Esports car. Um, Koyret in P22. Jordan Daly uh, did manage to finish two laps down to the good, um, but he did take a P23. Uh, Hubert Hauser, Kingston Lee, Carlos Kalatiud, and Andy Boardman uh, unfortunately did not take the checkered flag. And that is the end of the Hungara ring. Uh, very mixed conditions here. Start off soaking wet, of course, has now gone to a dry stage. So it's uh, it's been a challenge for the competitors, should we say. Amazing to see Nico Kumpu somehow what make dry tires work from the beginning uh, and then pitted and took another set of dry tires. No idea how or why he did that, but somehow did kind of make sense, I guess, to somebody somewhere in the pit lane of the Ferrari team. Um, 
And yeah, that unfortunately rounds out, of course, Euromasters uh, on Monday uh, for tonight. Of course, we'll be running on a slightly lower power mode than usual here at RCI TV. Um, I believe we are streaming Fridays. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on my ears, Chewie, but the Friday Championship should be streamed, of course, top split as always here at RCI TV, both now on Twitch and YouTube. Need Add. so if you are new to us on twitch and you like what you've seen tonight then of course a follow is always much appreciated as we do try and grow the audience and bring more acc content to those people at home and of course you guys at home none of this would be possible whether you're racing stewarding casting broadcasting or just running things behind the scene or just being a lurker in our streams it is always much appreciated and if you are interested in getting involved in rci and what we do here we do have a few vacancies still in the vacancy channel to be filled so head on over to our discord for more information on that one and uh daily in the youtube chat fixed up got back out and needed those points. Was a shame with the downshift, but hopefully better luck next time. So, of course, Daly always trying to finish his races where he can and did net some championship points. So, always good to hear. Thank you very much, Jordan, for the insight into your race. And, of course, the partners here at RCI as well with AK Esports, uh, Driver61.com, Fanatec, Digital Motorsports, and, of course, Go Setups. Uh, none of it here would be possible without those as well. You can check out all their links down below in the descriptions if you do believe they can help you in any way, whether it's from driver coaching to server solutions, the new hardware, whether it be Fanatec or Digital Motorsports on that one, or you're just looking for a premium setup store for ACC. And uh, of course, that rounds out tonight uh, for the Hungaro ring. Uh, we do find ourselves, of course, with a still a few more rounds to go for the European Masters. Uh, you'll find us next time, same time, next place. Oh, sorry, same time, <laughs> same place next week as we head to the Nürburgring on the 13th before rounding out on the 20th of March at Paul Ricard in France. And of course, championship still wide open. We've had a few big movers, a few big losers, but still all to play for. So more on that next time. Of course, all results tonight are pending stewards reports. Of course, reporting will be open for the next day or so. Uh, when you can get your set, uh, get your reports in, sorry, do head on over to the website for that one as well. Um, but for tonight, uh, from myself, uh, John Dalton, from my co-caster, Callum Kerwin, and of course, from Stewie behind the cameras and all the live stewards in the box, we bid you farewell. We hope you have a good week and we hope we will see you on either Twitch or YouTube for the Friday series commencing this week. Take care.